Okay, yeah, nothing else. One single web page. Um, and this is minefield, so it means it's probably going to crash, okay? So I'm sorry for that. <laughs> um, so, uh, do you see the transition stuff like that? It's like pretty awesome, right? And this is transition and transformation. And you see the nice front, it's from face. So, this is basically CSS3, okay? So, this web page, you CSS3, but it's an HTML5 page as well. So, you're gonna see some uh, video elements with the web M format from Google. Uh, so, it looks like that, it just works, okay? It's just a video, okay? Nothing that's just a video. So, you're gonna see this video a couple of times. Um, so, what's cool with HTML5, uh, what I really like actually, is uh, the inline SVG. What does it mean? Uh, inline. So, it means that you can use SVG inside your document. Before, if you wanted to do that before, you had to use XHTML and it looked like that. And it was pretty like just ugly, right? And now if you want to use SVG, it looks like that. And it's way easier, right? So, what should you care about SVG? So, uh, what you um, can do is boring shots. You can have graphics. Wow. But what I like is HTML. You can mix it with HTML and CSS. That's why it's really cool. So I'm going to show you why. So, first, what you can do is to uh, have some animations. You can use HVG animations with HTML. Okay? So, this is just to show that you can. So, uh, don't forget that, please. A video is an HTML tag. Okay, so what I'm doing here with the video, you can do it with a knife frame. You can do it with my own slides. Okay, so that's what I mean. You can use filters. So, um, those are five videos, okay? This is a video, this is a video, okay? It's black and white. But actually, the video itself is not black and white. It's colorful, okay? So, you there to see it's. So the, the animation is CSS and it, that's chorus. And here it's black and white. Why? Because of an SVG filter. What you can do is to define a filter with uh, some SVG and the filter element you can in CSS say, okay, you this HTML tag, please use this SVG filter with CSS. And I'm gonna show you another filter if I click here, look at the the video around, okay? Uh, see the blue? Do it again. Okay. The rule. Okay. Again, this is two lines of code. The filter is one line, one line of HTML, just one line, and the CSS one line of HTML. That's all. Okay. That's what's about filters. I want to talk about clip, clip and, and mask. So. This is, do you really know this demo? Maybe I don't know. Uh, what you need to know is first, this is a video, a round video, okay? It's possible because uh, I've merged the video tag and the SVG element, and actually what Gecko is going to do is just to say what's white in the SVG is going to be rendered from the video, and what's black is not going to be rendered. So what you have here actually, it's, you don't see the SVG part, but you see the video. You have a square like that, black here and white inside, so you see the video. Okay, this is the mask. So you can see here there's a mask as well, stuff like that. Um, and this is uh, a web app video and some stuff and illustrations. Uh, and what I like is look at the background. So this is the gradients. And so that's possible because of oh, this demo. So this is not what you think. This is a video. <laughs> it's the same mechanism, okay? I use uh, SVG test plus video and other thing. And again, it's just one line of CSS, some SVG, and that's all. And you see the thing growing like that, it's, it's, it's transitions. Um, and it's possible because of the good graphic performance of Firefox. So this is a grid, okay, with some stuff inside. Um, and with some transition, I can you know, do that. Um, Go through those images. Actually, it's not images. Like you can imagine it's videos. Okay. Um, like that. Okay. You can see two video playing here like that. Um, that's not a good part. But wait. So, uh, 
So I have some video images, but what you can do as well is to include some 3D inside the web content, okay? But what's really, really cool actually is you can include uh, web content inside 3D, and that's getting just crazy, you know? I have a video inside my 3D stuff here, and you know. So, so it's just a mix of everything, you know, 3D plus video plus 3D plus video plus CSS and stuff like that. So uh, that's what's about uh, graphic stuff. And I want to talk a bit about APIs. Uh, so you've probably heard about offline index DB geolocation file API drag and drop. Uh, that's so. Besides, uh, index DB is not really new. Um, drag and drop, as you can see. But what I want to talk about right now. It's two things. It's the history of API first. So uh, basically, the history of API. Let's go fast. The history of API is just a way to say to, to change the behavior of those two routers. Okay, back and forward. Okay, you can do something when the user clicks on back and forward. Okay, and what I do here, I can control my slides with back and forward. It's all I browse my slides, okay? With back and forward. And I can jump to the slide I want, to the, you know, the thing. Okay? Um, and the other thing I want to talk about is WebSockets. So maybe this time is uh, So WebSockets, this is, this is Firefox, and I can control my slides with this Firefox. This is a web page inside Firefox. So this is an hash number, okay, with Firefox, the next email of Firefox. Inside which supports web sockets. This is an actually which supports web sockets. I'm explain. And this is a server, a not GS server, okay? And I can I connect this to this server, and this server is connected to this computer, okay? And every time I press a button, I send a message to the server, and the server can push an information to the to the browser. Usually, you know, like think about Twitter. What Twitter, Twitter does is to just uh, the web page. It goes to the Twitter server every 20 seconds, okay? We don't have the push. We don't have push the push. Okay, we are pushing the push to web socket. So I can put my slides with my easy page what it means. Okay? And that was my last slide. So I appreciate it.